everyone welcome back to my channel you're watching my second video about my favorite place in russia saint petersburg you know i really love russian literature and the first name that comes to mind when you think of saint petersburg in terms of literature is of course dostoevsky because he lived in that city for the longest part of his life and also he wrote some of his famous novels in that city for example, Crime and Punishment, or Humiliated and Insulted, and others. I'm gonna show you the part of the city where Dostoevsky lived, and it's an interesting one because it's not the typical St. Petersburg that all tourists want to see, because in the 19th century it was inhabited by the poor, and actually nowadays it's kinda true as well, but at the same time it has its own charm, and it's mysterious in a way as well. And today I'm gonna show you some of the places where Dostoevsky lived, and also I will walk you through the places where the main events of crime and punishment took place. Are you ready? Let's go! Dostoevsky was writing so much about St. Petersburg that with him this city has become synonymous. Interestingly enough, he was born in Moscow. At the age of 19, he moved to the northern capital of Russia because his dad wanted him to study at the Military Engineering Institute. St. Petersburg is the city where he lived most of his life. Dostoevsky had a special attitude towards St. Petersburg. He called it the most abstract and intentional city in the world. He probably said that because the territory of St. Petersburg used to be a huge swamp, but Peter the Great decided to build the most magnificent city on this land. St. Petersburg is also known as the city built on bones, as its foundations sit above the skeletons of laborers who erected it. The history of the city affected how the writer depicted it in his novels. It's not a coincidence that his characters either committed crime here or went mad. Here is the last building where Dostoevsky lived. He never owned any property, he rented apartments all the time, and he lived in 20 different locations around the city. Fun fact about Dostoevsky, he preferred to live at crossroads near a church. Apparently, such location of a flat was perfect to observe all kinds of people and get an inspiration for his novels. Close to the building where he lived, there is a typical for St. Petersburg well yard. It is called that because walls of the building surround the whole yard. When you are standing there, it looks like you are at the bottom of a well. They are common in this city because it's an extremely windy place and such structure protects house dwellers from winds. In Dostoevsky's novel, such yards are described in a depressing way, as they symbolize a dead end his characters come to. Dostoevsky lived in the criminal and poor part of the city. The houses like these were inhabited by poor people who would rent rooms and even corners of rooms. As a result, one room could be inhabited by several dwellers. The view from their windows was not inspiring as well, just yellow walls of the same building. These yards were filthy, as there was no sewerage at that time. Still, Dostoevsky loved walking in places like this to get inspiration. Dostoevsky's last house is located on a street that nowadays is named after him. It got its name in 1915. It's still not the prettiest part of St. Petersburg, just like at Dostoevsky's times, when this area was situated almost on the edge of the city. Personally, I'm not very keen on coming here, because somehow I don't feel comfortable in this district. In 
1849, a Russian court sentenced Dostoevsky to death for his anti-government activities linked to a radical intellectual group. The members of this circle were sentenced to death by firing squad. Dostoevsky and other prisoners were taken here for the execution. Now this place looks really lively, there are no marks of that tragic event. There is a youth theater and a park here. Last minute when Dostoevsky was counting seconds to his death, a car delivered a letter from the Tsar commuting the sentence. Instead of being subjected to death, Dostoevsky was sent to Siberia, to a prison camp. We went to the underbelly of St. Petersburg of the middle of the 19th century. This district was infamous for its criminal dwellers, and there we found the house where Dostoevsky lived while he was writing Crime and Punishment. Dostoevsky had huge debts, so he was always searching for the cheapest places to rent. Around this area also lived the characters of Dostoevsky's famous novel, Crime and Punishment, Raskolnikov, Sonia Marmeladova, and the old moneylender. The reader gets to know St. Petersburg from Raskolnikov's movements. Therefore, not the whole city is shown, but only the part of it through which the character's route passes. Drinking houses, taverns, narrow stuffy streets, Sinai Square, gloomy buildings with their ugly dwellings, corners. This place is mentioned in the novel many times. Now it looks very different to what it used to be like. The only thing that reminds us of Dostoevsky's St. Petersburg here is the yellow color of buildings, which is also a metaphor in his books. In Russian, madhouses are called yellow homes. That's why yellow is a symbolic color in Dostoevsky's books. By the way, this little building here is the prison where Dostoevsky spent a couple of days for quoting the emperor in the newspaper. Instead of the metro station, there used to be a huge church here. The place in front of the church was packed with poor people, the homeless, criminals and prostitutes. It used to be a strange place where religion was mixed with sin, but Raskolnikov loved this place because here he could blend in the crowd. A 30-minute stroll away from Sinai Square is Raskolnikov's house. Here Dostoevsky settled Raskolnikov somewhere in the attic in a small closet, which the writer compared to a coffin or a cabin. Here the novel starts. On an exceptionally hot evening, early in July, a young man came out of the garret in which he lodged in S Place and walked slowly as though in hesitation towards K Bridge. Here is that K Bridge or Kokushkin Bridge. Raskolnikov crosses it at least four times in the novel. He also crossed it when he was walking to the place of the murder. Dostoevsky loved walking here as well. The bridge is built over Gribayedova Canal, which Dostoevsky in a loving way calls Stinky Ditch. The heat in the street was terrible, and the airlessness, the bustle and the plaster scaffolding, bricks and dust all about him, and that special Petersburg stench so familiar to all who are unable to get out of town in summer, all worked painfully upon the young man's already overwrought nerves. The insufferable stench from the pothouses, which are particularly numerous in that part of the town, and the drunken men whom he met continually, although it was a working day, completed the revolting misery of the picture. An expression of the profoundest disgust gleamed for a moment in the young man's refined face. Let's follow the route that Raskolnikov took when he went to the place where he killed the moneylender.
The moneylender lived on the fourth floor of this building. Raskolnikov took the back stairs that were intended for servants to use. It's also a well yard with many corners, which is a tragic symbol in Dostoevsky's novels. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you've learned something new about St. Petersburg and Dostoevsky. Let me know in comments if you've read any of his novels and what you think about them. And also please tell me if you like Russian literature in general and if you have favorite authors. I would be really interested to know that. Thank you so much for supporting my channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. I wish you to have a great day. Thank you. Bye.